Hey guys, Peter from SS Bushcraft. Well, my first video went really good with the uh, the winter dress in part one, so uh, I uh, really excited. And I thank everybody for making the comments and stuff like that. So uh, here's part two. Um, before I start part two, though, I want to turn around and and kind of put a disclaimer out there for everybody. As a lot of you know, um, you know me talking about this uh, winter uh, survival series kind of thing. In, in winter dress is uh, it's totally 100 percent it's uh, from what I know um, you know from from what I've been trained uh, when I was in the military and uh, you know when I served in the Arctic up north and stuff like that by any means um, please don't take this as the you know the be all end all of, of knowing everything about Arctic survival or you know camping out in the winter or bushcrafting in the winter and stuff like that. Um, you know, I'm not a doctor. Uh, I'm not an EMT or anything like that. I'm just this is my personal knowledge, my personal training that I had from the military. That um, at the time I was actually able to turn around and train. You know, to to my guys and, and to my platoon, my company. You know, all that kind of stuff. Um, you guys that you know that have been in the military, um, you definitely you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so by any means, don't take it as being, oh, well, I know this is fact, you know, um, you know, I heard it from Peter from FS Bushcraft and, uh, you know, he knows what he's talking about and everything else. I mean, I know what I'm talking about. I know that I'm comfortable enough uh, to, to know, have the knowledge that I have, I should say, and that, um, you know, that I could turn around and, and help somebody out and help out a friend or whatever so that, uh, you know, we'd be able to turn around and go out and, and, and stay in the bush, stay in the winter. Um, like Cole Craven and I, prime example, like we did the other day. Um, so that's just basically it. I'm just kind of, as we all are doing on here, um, you know, sharing our knowledge, uh, what we have, you know, to try to help each other out and maybe a little experience of what we have so that we can all go out and enjoy all year round and not have to worry about, you know, oh, it's too cold and, you know, I can't go out or, or, or whatever the case may be. Or you have gone out and you find that for whatever strange reason, you just can't be warm. Um, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, please, you know, as I say, guys, you know, I'm brand new doing this on YouTube and everything else. And um, I know I apologize a lot, but uh, it's raw. It's me. That's the way I am. Um, but definitely, if you have any questions or concerns or whatever, please, you know, leave them in the comments below. And uh, definitely, I'll turn around and get those answers, um, you know, and... Uh, respond back and, and help you out if you have any questions in that area or like I say definitely turn around and take this uh, if you're one of those kind of people most definitely turn around and take the you know the knowledge or, or whatever it is that, that you know I say in the video and I pass on and uh, you know it, you know if you got a friend or whatever or your family doctor or you know uh, an EMT or or you know somebody that, that's you know qualified in that area definitely most definitely turn around and uh, you know take what I say and ask them and uh, if I do say something that doesn't make sense or it seems wrong, definitely let me know uh, at the same time. Um, I'm kind of nervous. I'll say that right now. <laughs> it's been a long, long, long time since, uh, since I've done anything like this. So I kind of wanted to kind of do it like a classroom style so that I wouldn't forget. As you can see, I made up a whole bunch of notes. I made up a bunch of sheets. And uh, yeah, so I guess we'll get started. Um, but like I say... Um, yeah, it might be a longer video than normal, um, and I apologize for that, but I just kind of want to bash this out because the other thing I want to do is that with the dress and everything else is definitely, uh, you know, when we turn around and get a chance, I'll, I'll, I'll stop and show you there in a bit, um, when we get some snow and we can get outside. Unfortunately, we're having a warm day again today. It's like 10 degrees outside, and uh, it's raining, and there's absolutely not a drop of snow be seen outside anywhere at all so it's kind of a bummer my winter camping is getting destroyed so anyway without further ado I'll get started and one of the things I'm just going to turn around and mention and start on is that with cold dress the reason that the cold is so important and that we dress properly as we all know what's the biggest thing that can turn around and happen good old hypothermia um, now I've just quick notes that I've turned around and made up guys as we all know the human body turns around and sits at 37 degrees Celsius which is 98.6 Fahrenheit for my American friends. 
I finally turned around and did the conversion so I had them handy <laughs> before I started. So in hypothermia, when we're out in the bush or stuff like that, or if we're out somewhere and we get cold, um, as some may know, some may not, we have three different stages of hypothermia. There's actually mild hypothermia, mild hypothermia, moderate hypothermia, and severe hypothermia. And basically the way that we can tell is that if we had a thermometer, or whatever the case may be, that we can turn around and take our temperature, or take our buddy's temperature, or whatever the case may be, is that we said at mild hypothermia would anything below or sorry, would be from 90 to 95 degrees, or for us Canadians, 32.2 to 35 Celsius. So as we know, once again, as I said, our human body sits at 37 degrees Celsius, or 98 for American friends. So it would be 90 to 95, 32.2 to 35 is mild hypothermia. Now the reason why being the human body at 37 degrees, and, and when I go to talk on that stuff, guys, I'm just going to use what, you know, Canada and uh, degrees, but at 37 degrees our human body roughly sits at at all times. The reason why we have that drop down to, to 35, so you know we've got a degree difference, is just because of the fact of being, you know, we get colds, you know, we're walking around, we get that little shiver, or whatever the case may be, you know, sure, our, our, our core temperature can turn down and drop that degree. Does that mean we've got hypothermia? No, it's not hypothermia. It's just we're cold, right? It's when it starts to drop down below that 35 and you're getting down, you know, into your 32, you're definitely in the first stages of hypothermia. You're in mild hypothermia. Um, next stage would turn around and be moderate hypothermia, which would be anything between 82 to 90 degrees or 27.7 Celsius to 32 Celsius. So now, you you know, we're, we're starting to get into that, that first stage of a danger zone of, you know, the body starting to shut down. Basically, you know, all blood's turned on and flowing in from the extremities and stuff like that, trying to go to the core and it's trying to keep the core warm and, and stuff like that. Next stage would be severe hypothermia, um, which you turn on and get into at anything at 82 degrees or below or 27 Celsius and below. You're, uh, as it says, severe hypothermia, major, major issues. Um, you know, normally at that point in time, people are unconscious. Um, stuff like that and, and there's just no you know it, it's it's quick to bring them back get their core temperature up and stuff like that now that doesn't mean you got to rush and, and, and you know heat them up right off the bat because that's a big no-no now some of the symptoms of hyperthermia um, and this is basically hypothermia symptoms for adults for children it is a little different there's little you know different things to turn and look for but the first uh, thing is is definitely shivering but and this is a big button that I say to everybody because everybody assumes that you're gonna shiver 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 when we're cold as, as I said shivering which may stop as hypothermia progresses shivering is actually a good sign that a person's heat regulation system is still active so what that means is that in mild hypothermia you could still turn around and be shivering you could still very uncommon, but can turn around in uh, moderate hypothermia, still have somebody shivering. Severe hypothermia, chances are they're not shivering no more. And the reason being is that the body basically is starting to shut down. Shivering is a way, it's a healthy way of us to be conscious enough to be aware that our, our core temperature is dropping and our body is trying to turn on and heat itself up and by doing that we shiver so it, it the way I explain it is that your body is starting to you know your muscles are kind of you know doing contractions and stuff like that which making you you know shake or you know you, we get the jitters and in our teeth and stuff like that because your your body's basically trying to move it's trying to make itself move so that it, it, it can it can warm up as we all know you know if we're cold and we're standing around and it's cold but if we start walking and we start working or doing whatever then we warm up so that's kind of what that is uh, second thing is going to be slow or shallow breathing so you know as a person gets colder once again the body's trying to conserve energy it's trying to warm itself up so we're going to breathe shallower and slower uh, third thing is, is definitely confusion and memory loss. Um, you know, we're, we're, and these are things that, that you, as yourself, you know, if you're experiencing hypothermia, uh, mild hypothermia, moderate hypothermia, that 
you can realize yourself is that you know you if you just stop and think um, you know that you know uh, let's use the case of being you fell on a stream uh, you know walking across a log or whatever fell on a stream and uh, you know broke through the ice and it's cold and you get out and, and you realize oh I can't think or whatever um, I, I, I know it's hard to say but it's like kind of realize that hey I, I'm in the stage of the hyperthermia I'm getting confused I can't concentrate or, uh, you know, <laughs> forgot you fell in the water <laughs> is a major one. Uh, drowsiness or exhaustion is another one. Um, being cold, once again, the body's trying to shut itself down. It's trying to warm itself up. You know, it's trying to do everything it possibly can do. So one of the things, as with a lot of illnesses or things that can turn around and happen to us, uh, you're going to get drowsy and start to go to sleep, which is a big no-no. Um, Fifth thing, slurred or mumbled speech. <laughs> I have hypothermia all the time. <laughs> I slur and mumble my speech all the time. But that's another one. So, you know, if you got that buddy or whatever that has turned around and fallen into the water or severely cold, whatever the case may be, and, you know, definitely you want to keep talking to them. You know, you want to keep them awake because you don't want them to turn around and fall asleep or, you know, pass out or whatever. So, you know, trying to talk to them and everything. And you notice that their speech is slurring or they're mumbling or whatever the case may be. It's signs that their, their core is getting... Basically, their core is dropping, and they're getting colder and colder and colder. So they're moving down, down the list of, of you know the stages of hypothermia. Uh, loss of coordination, fumbling hands, uh, stumbling steps. Pretty explanatory. Uh, same idea. You know, they're not able. You know, people when they get to that point in hypothermia and stuff like that, um, you know, are going to have a hard time. You know, trying to get that fire going. Let's say or you know, uh, uh, trying to get the, the wet clothes off, um, or whatever the case may be, in the worst case scenario, falling in, into, into a stream, and, and, you know, trying to get it off, and, and trying to get themselves dry and, and warm and stuff. Uh, seventh, obviously, makes total sense to me, a slow and weak pulse, because, uh, you know, as they go down the list, um, the body's shutting down. Uh, it's basically, it's dying, uh, because the, the core temperature has dropped too low. Uh, eight, in a severe hypothermia, in hypothermia, a person may be unconscious without signs of breathing or pulse. Now, with that being said, there's been many, many, many cases of people in hypothermia that I know of that um, people have thought that they were dead. Um, you know, if you do have that CPR training or that EMT training or whatever the case may be, you're definitely probably going to know about hypothermia. Being especially, you know, if you're in a, a, a northern climate where hypothermia is a, a common thing or whatever the case may be, um, then you're going to know what I'm getting at. And that is just because there's no breathing or there's no pulse that you can't feel doesn't mean the person's dead. Um, there's been cases of, of people that have been out, you know, in the snow, whatever the case may be, in a winter situation and, you know, have been found by search and rescue and they thought that they were gone. Um, and they they still administer CPR, which is recommended, administered CPR, and, uh, you know, got them to the hospital, or the case may be in the hospitals, have turned around and, and gradually have brought their core temperature up, and they were fine. Um, you know, fine in the aspect of what I mean is that they were still alive. Um, they're not dead. So that's kind of the, you know, the, one of the big symptoms. I mean, if, and that's, by that point in time, we know that they're hypothermic because if they, you know, falling into it, uh, you know, I'll say again, the stream, uh, or whatever broke through the ice, and we can't feel a pulse, or, or, you know, there's no breathing, they're definitely hypothermic, I mean, that's, that's what's happened, um, whoop, I make sure, here with you guys, I'll just turn this a bit, so I'm still in the, in the view, and then we get to, what are the, uh, what is the treatment for hypothermia, um, as we know, hypothermia is a potentially life-threatening condition that needs emergency medical attention immediately. So, some of this stuff are, which makes total sense, remove any wet clothes, hats, gloves, shoes, or socks. Basically, in my opinion, and what I've been trained, and I'll use the term my opinion, like I say, because I'm not a doctor, and you know, not that EMT trained, or whatever the case may be, I've just been trained in Arctic survival, and how to, how to survive. Um, so what you want to do, as it says, remove any wet clothing, hats, gloves, shoes, or socks, is basically you want to strip everything off. Uh, makes common sense. If it's wet, take it off. Um, now with that being said, as 
some of us all talk about when we talk about our winter dress and stuff, which we'll get to after, um, you know, wool's a great insulator. You know, if it gets wet, it still insulates the whole bit. That doesn't mean because, you know, you've got, got for, you know, if you had wool long johns on or, you know, a wool shirt or whatever and it's wet, oh, you're going to leave it on because, you, you, you know, it's going to give them a bit of insulation. No, take it off. It all has to come off because you don't want anything that's going to be next to the body that's going to keep that any kind of moisture, any kind of coldness to the body at all. Next thing is protect the person against wind, drafts, and further heat loss with warmer, dry clothes and blankets. Obviously it makes sense. Like I said, we don't want nothing cold or anything like that against their body. Um, next thing is move gently to a warm, dry shelter as soon as possible. Obviously, once again, you want to get them out of the cold and somewhere warm. Uh, begin rewarming the person with extra clothing. Use warm blankets. Other helpful items are uh, for warming are an electric blanket. We wouldn't have that out in the bush. <laughs> uh, to the torso area and hot packs and heating pads on the torso, armpits, necks, and groin. However, these can cause burns to the skin. Use your own body heat if nothing else is available. So basically, what they're getting at is definitely if we turn on and use anything that's man-made, uh, and that's the way I would put it to 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 try to warm a person up. So being that uh, you know, like it said, uh, heating pads or you know those, those um, um, hot pads. That you can buy that you know you squeeze or whatever and you, you put in your gloves or in your boots or whatever like that um, you could actually definitely use those but next to the skin because the person is so cold and the skin is so cold it can actually turn on and cause a burn uh, to the skin because it heats the skin up way too fast uh, being so cold um, and, and saying that using your own body heat I actually in my personal opinion and, and being trained that is the best way to turn around and do it because you're not going to shock the body but you're gradually going to turn around and bring the body heat up with that core temperature up on the person and what I mean by that is that some um, prime example like Cole Craven and I once again I'll use that that analogy and that example when we were out the other night and we were talking about it um, you know and I, I, I made the comment to him I said you know if, if in like comparing kind of what we both knew about hypothermia and stuff um, is that if I was with a buddy and let's say he turned around and fell into the stream or whatever, the first thing I'm going to do is get him out, definitely get those clothes off. I'm going to get him into a dry sleeping bag. I'm going to turn around and make sure that none of my clothing on the outside, so basically in my outer layer, I'm going to take off and just have my inner layer that's going to be warm or whatever that's against my body. And I'm climbing into that bag with them. And yes, guys, I'm climbing into that bag with them naked. Um, because the he's going to be naked and I'm going to be clothed. And the reason being is that my body heat that I'm generating with my warm clothes and everything that I have on is going to help turn around and warm him up from head to toe. So we're both going to, you know, get into the sleeping bag or whatever. Now, worst case scenario, if the sleeping bag like I use, uh, I know uh, uh, Cole Craven and I, prime example, when we go out, um, you know, this time of the year, uh, we both turn on and have Canadian military um, sleeping bags that we use, and they're mummy bags. Almost impossible to get two people in. <laughs> but what I would do in that scenario is I would turn around and, uh, you know, strip him down, get him in the bag, and then I would turn around and lay on the bag, like kind of wrap around him and wrap myself around the bag and around him to turn around and have my body heat go through the bag and, and heat them up that way. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, obviously the next thing you want to do is take the, per, the person's temperature. Um, if you have a thermometer available, which hopefully everybody carries in their first aid kit. I To me, that's something you should turn around and carry in your first aid kit when, uh, you know, if you're going to turn around and do Arctic, or I shouldn't say Arctic, sorry. <laughs> I'm just so used to saying Arctic because that's where I was. Um, if you're going to go out winter camping. Um, just because it, it's nice to have that so that you, you know, double check. Um, the other thing, last thing would be offer warm liquids. But obviously, we want to avoid alcohol and caffeine, uh, which speed up heat loss. Don't try to give fluids to an unconscious person. Well, obviously, because they're going to choke on it. But what that means, <laughs> coffee, caffeine, no, we can't give everybody coffee. And the reason being is that we hopefully all know alcohol and caffeine actually turn around and help 
the body speed up heat loss um, because you know it thins out the blood as we all know and everything else or hopefully we all know um, I guess I shouldn't say that because some of us might not know and are watching this video to learn um, so yeah so alcohol and caffeine will as I say caffeine <laughs> will turn around and thin out our blood and turn around and cause us to lose more heat so that's kind of it kind of fast I know I kind of went over it fast but definitely like I said guys if anybody has any questions or anything feel free um, you can ask not a problem at all um, so now we get into the dress layers um, basically I kind of went over this in part one but I had like our base layer which is basically going to be the good old that we never showed anybody <laughs> our undergarments um, you know for us guys it could be a t-shirt could be a breeze and it could be our, our, you know, our socks for our ladies, you know, bras, sports bras, whatever the case may be, panties, and, and the same thing. Um, yeah, so that's kind of that. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. The next one, and now the other thing too is we've got, I got one, two, three, four, five, six sheets across, six different layers. That doesn't mean that it has to be six layers. Um, as you guys turn on see when I show you my stuff, I got mine down to about five layers. And the reason being is some of this stuff can actually, it kind of can be put together. But the next layer, the base layer. So this is it's basically called the base layer uh, because it's your, you know, it's what next to your skin and your underwear and everything else. And then the next layer is also considered to be your base layer. So, you know, we'll call it base layer two, which would be your thermal, um, your thermal underwear. Um, so your, as I call it, your wicking layer, as most other people do too. And I'll get to that and I'll, I'll show you what I mean by what a wicking layer would be. Um, and I kind of did that in, in the first part, so anybody that's seen that. The next one, which I've got optional, but the insulating layer, um, depending on the climate, depending on where you are, where you're going, how cold it is outside, whatever the case may be, you may turn around and have your insulating layers, two separate layers, or you may turn on and combine it into one. And honestly, that's where I get into mine and I kind of combine these two together in my area uh, where I'm at. But, uh, but a prime example, when I was in the Arctic, I had all six layers. But here, being in southern New Brunswick, uh, where I am on the east coast of Canada, I mean the coldest we might turn around and get in the winter is, you know, minus 40 um, degrees. So we're looking at what it be, if I'm doing it right guys, you know, 90, what, 99, no, sorry, it's going to be less than that because we're going to be way the heck down here. I should have looked that up. <laughs> Busted! Didn't get that one. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, minus 40 is about the coolest that we get around here. So I would still be comfortable in combining these two together. But anyway, to get to the point, um, on the diagram, what it has, it has like a wool sweater or fleece leggings and, uh, you know, a thicker pair of wool socks or whatever the case may be. Um, but this could also turn around and be, in my case, what I'll show you is, is that, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of wool, um, unfortunately. But, uh, and the only reason being is that, I've, to me personally, and this is just my personal opinion, I agree with everything that everybody says about wool, and I'm a firm believer in wool as well. But I, to me, my thing is, is that um, uh, because of the way that I camp, and as I've said before, I always like to camp and be more prepared in my camping supplies, let's say that I have on my back, in my backpack, or whatever the case may be, um, so, so I'm worried about weight. And that's the only thing, it's weight. So for me, I don't choose to wear wool, and the reason being is that uh, I wear like polyester, that um, and the polyesters that have been, I call it fleece, fleece tallized, like the 100% polyester, but feel like fleece. And um, I'll show examples of that with the stuff that I have when we get to that clothing. But uh, but yeah, so that kind of covers that. The insulating layer too, if you were to turn it and wear it again, as it says in the diagram, it's got a fleece jacket, windbreaker trousers, a scarf, and your your uh, light wear gloves. So what this is kind of covering, it's kind of getting to that aspect that you're dressing for, 
you know, you're at that layer where you're around the campsite, where the case may be, you're working, you know, you're cutting your wood for your firewood and stuff like that. So you're keeping your body active so you're not getting cold. You're not just standing still, whatever the case may be. Then it gets into your, our protective layers. Our first protective layer is, is basically that cover that we're putting on, you know, if we were starting a walk, whatever the case may be, walking from the car to, to our campground, doing whatever, and, you know, we got our heavy gloves, insulated uh, pants or overalls, definitely our cap, our boots, you know, maybe a windproof uh, shawl jacket and a down jacket, something, you know, to build that layers. And once again, like I said, that can all be put together. And then the last one um, would be our extreme cold, which we would get into our protective layer two, which in my case, when I was in the Arctic, i just turn that because it might not be in view, um, which would be like your full Arctic parka, you know, Arctic pants, the whole bit. Uh, you're going to get into your, your face mask, uh, goggles, you know, another pair of heavy, uh, um, heavy duty mitts, um, as well as insulated, uh, snow boots like you know military mucklucks or, or whatever the case may be um, if those of us that have served in the military which are you guys don't know what I mean here in Canada especially you know the white mucklucks that we can put on and stuff like that and the wool pants and everything else so I kind of think I left anything out that I wanted to say but kind of just go really quick because I don't want to make the video too too long and I'd like to turn on and try to get it all done in one step but uh but yeah so what i'm going to do guys i'm just going to stop the video real quick and going to reposition it because i have it sitting on my table in the kitchen and uh i'll get it down and then uh, i'll get going over the uh the clothes and the layers all right so right back all right guys so i'm back so i think i've got everything in view here i'm just gonna move my coffee out of the way and i'll put it up here where uh you guys can see that or not, I don't mind that. Uh, kind of looks like clutter, but when we stay in here in our kitchen that we turn on, put all the kids' cups and stuff like that on so that uh, you know the kids can easily turn and get that stuff. But anyway, not part of the video. So what I'll do is I'm gonna go through each piece as we have on the layers on the wall, and I'll bring it up closer uh, so everybody can see. So obviously the first base layer, I don't need to get into that anymore. That's our undergarments. Uh, we'll put it that way. So the next layer, base layer two, as I call it, would be, and I'll come up closer um, so everybody can see. Like I say, guys, sorry, I'm just kind of playing around with where everything is. So the first thing I'm going to definitely turn around and have on is my um, polyester socks, um, which would be that base layer two. So, you know, after our undergarments. So my polyester socks, and obviously, as I said in, in the first part, in the first video, the uh, the polyester wicking layer, our actual undergarment. Um, I kind of showed that in the first one, like I said. If not, go back, watch the first video, you'll see what I'm talking about, so I won't spend so much time. But it's that stretchy polyester layer that, uh, you know, if it gets wet or whatever the case may be, it turns around and uh, it'll dry fast if we need it. You know, strip down and dry off. Um, and obviously, the shirt as well. Long sleeve to help protect the arms. So that's that. Now, my next layer, which we get into the insulating layer. So say, kind of work the two of these together. I do for our area. Once again, the nice polyester, kind of a mix of a wool as well, um, sock. Now, with these socks I turn around and get, I like because of the fact that, once again, my favorite store, Costco, really cheap. You get about uh, four pair of them for, uh, they're a little bit more expensive, but as I say, we're also on a budget, so we're budget bush crafting. Um, it's like uh, 12 bucks for four pair. But the thing that I like about them is that they actually turn and have, I don't know if you can see that well, but as I put in the first video, I believe it was, the um, the underneath of the foot, that it's like a, a ventilation that's uh, sewn into it where, where the material is not as thick. 
Um, so, you know, it just turns on and helps the foot breathe. And uh, so that would be my first insulating layer on my feet. Uh, or the outside insulating layer, I should say. Um, next, my favorite, my cotton mix polyester t-shirt <laughs> that I wear. And, yeah, Pirate Republic of St. John. Um, everybody knows, most of you turn on or know. Yes, I live in St. John, New Brunswick. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the t-shirt that I wear. Next thing, over top of my wicking layer pants, I wear my polyester um, sports pants that I have. Um, and they're, they're hecker, uh, bleh, hecker. <laughs> that made a whole lot of sense. Um, they're actually quite thick. Um, but the reason I, I wear them and choose to wear them is because of the fact that it has the zipper on the leg, which is nice. So, you know, if I need it to, to strip down to this layer, I can actually help cool down by actually turning on and zipping the legs and stuff like that. And uh, because of the fact, once again, the polyester, they dry really, really, really quick. Um, and usually what I would do is that with my uh, insulating socks, I would actually turn around and tuck the bottom of my leg inside the socks when I have them on. And like I said, if I had some snow and we could get out and dress, but I may end up having to do it <laughs> with no snow, I'll definitely turn around and do a video when we do the, uh, you know, the shelter and aspect and, and, and my sleep system uh, in the cold weather. Um, I'll have the gear on and show you layer by layer as I have it on. Now, with that, with that layer, and this is why I say combining the two, the insulating layer one and insulating layer two, on top of the t-shirt, my favorite sweater that I have on all the time when I do my videos, um, I have that over top of my t-shirt, and that turns around and gives me that, uh, that insulating protective layer. Now, once again, combining the two, if I had the polyester and um, kind of getting into that insulating layer too and a protective layer, this is where I kind of combine them again. So this is why I say I get down to that, that two layer. If I was in around the camp and working, um, and I'll use that scenario again, and uh, Cole Craven could turn on the back me up on that, if you guys want to ask. When we were out the other night, Mind you, it wasn't super cold, but it was still, you know, colder. Um, most of the night, I just had this on with my t-shirt and my wicking layer. So basically three layers, and I was totally warm. And it's not heavy, and that's the reason I like the polyester, because it will hold the heat, and it's not a super heavy weight that you have on, so, you know, you can still work around the camp you know, getting the firewood, doing whatever. Now, if it did get super cold, um, or got colder, I should say, then I could turn around and go to, which I usually carry in my bag, um, once again, polyester, but the polyester fleece like I'm getting at, so it's kind of got like that, I don't know if you can see this very well in the light, guys, but um, it's not like, the shiny wicking polyester layer. Um, it, it's got more of that, that fleece fleece line to it. And I carry that in my bag and it's just the vest. My Winchester vest. <laughs> but yeah, so I got that. So then it gets to the next one. Protective layer one. Um, which usually I have on all the time just because once again polyester on the outside so it's like that you know nylon polyester I guess you could say it's polyester but it feels like nylon uh, if that makes sense um, you know somebody out there may be able to explain the materials better as I say I just know when I'm buying it what I'm looking for and what it does but uh, and these are insulated with that polyester uh, fleece like I was talking about. So this would be my outside protective cover, but I wear these all the time over top of the polyester, my polyester pants, 
and if I start getting warm then I can in essence turn around and take these off. Um, now some of the things I look for for the outside and this is just me again my personal opinion for the protective layer on the outside is I want something that's going to go down over my boot and I'll, I'll explain why I want it to go down over my boot compared to the kind of boots that I wear um, compared to boots that uh, you know somebody else might wear. Um, but they actually have a clip on the leg part that actually attaches to you know your uh, your lacing on your boot to help turn around and keep that pulled down or the other thing is is that uh, what I do um, with them is actually turn around and tuck it into my boot and then this goes on the outside of the boot. Now with these pants um, they have the protective guard on the back of the, the leg so that when you're walking or whatever um, and you have them down, you know, if you did turn on and step on or whatever, you know, you're not going to destroy your pants or, or, or stuff like that. Um, but the cool thing I do like with, with this style, and once again, Costco specialty, um, and I got them for 36 bucks uh, when I buy them, is that they have on the inside, there's a nice Velcro strap that actually on the back of the leg has the hook that you can actually turn around and bring that velcro strap up put it through the back of the pants and hook it down so that you can actually bring up once again the back of your pants so that you know the back of your pants aren't dragging on the back of your boots or getting stuck um, a lot of the time too I'll do that like when um, Cole Craven and I were, were out hiking the other day and uh, we did the um, the video on uh, what I drink this um, I turned around and had them up like that because I knew I was walking in water um, so it just helps too, so that the bottom of my pants don't, you know, not that it matters, because they are water, uh, waterproof, that, uh, you know, I wasn't getting them all soaked and dragging around and everything else. Now the other thing I look for for my protective layer on the outside is uh, lots of pockets. I mean, with these pants, I've got, you know, the back pockets, um, you know, you got your front pockets that, that zip up, which is nice. And on the one leg, you know, kind of like a, what do you call it, a combat pant or, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, khakis, is that it, the ones, you know, dress pants or whatever that would have the, uh, the, the pockets on the side. And on the other side, <clears throat> they turn out to have a zipper pocket above that leg pocket with a nice big pouch. And obviously another side pocket as well. And the reason for that is I just like so that that way there I have an extra spot I can turn around and put um, other things like uh, you know my scarf or uh, an extra pair of gloves or you know it could be even uh, my fire kit. Uh, something I need to get to or that I want to get to that I'm going to use that uh, you know I'm going to want to use it a lot or whatever the case may be. I've got it right there on my legs so it's easy to find. So to go with that, like I say, combining the protective layer, um, kind of your insulating layer, protective layer, and uh, your um, extreme cold outer layer. Um, so as I say, if I was getting cold and I put on my vest and uh, now I'm starting to get cold or really cold, then I go to my trusty jacket. Now, this is the same thing, it's fully polyester on the outside, it's polyester on the inside. The outside is the, the thick waterproof, um, I shouldn't say waterproof, but water resistant, so you know, it'll hold up in the rain. Um, but uh, that soft, shiny kind of polyester, and then a great OD green, as well as it's got the polyester on the inside and it's down fill and then it's got the nice fluffy polyester on the bottom which would go around you know your midsection now this kind of gets to uh, a double thing um, I need to get a new one and uh, I went out as part of uh, Mike Barton from Bushcraft Barton had done the challenge when he put up his video um, with the wool blankets um, where he gets his wool blankets and stuff so Mike if you're watching this um, it kind of got me going on that fact of being on the challenge that uh, I needed a new jacket. Um, so like your wool jacket that that, uh, that you got, I turned around and went out and looked at my 
local thrift store and thought, well, I'll go to the thrift, thrift store first. And here in New Brunswick, um, which I'm sure, I'm, I'm not sure if they're in the States or not, for, for our American friends if you're watching, but uh, Value Village. Um, it went to and actually got the jacket for 24 bucks. Um, and it's like in mint condition. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Um, you know, and it's got the nice polyester hood and it's lined as well, so it keeps warm. So it was part of that, that challenge that you had, Mike, you know, growing up and checking in your local thrift shop. Of course, I didn't find any wool blankets. I was going to do a video on you, so I'll just throw that in now that this is where I got this coat from. But, um, like I say, you can find, find stuff like this all over. But I like it because, once again, it's not heavy, it's not thick, but uh, it's hot. It, it heats up really quick. So that's why I said like the other night when uh, Cole and I wrote, um, I wore this from the car to our campground that we went to and I ended up taking it off because it, it was just dying. It didn't put it on for, for the rest of the entire trip um, because of the fact I, I was warming up with my insulating layers. And that's what I, I guess, that's what I can say is that that's, what I, that's the way I try to dress is try to keep it so that you know some of the bigger stuff that I, I don't need it but I bring it um, so that I have it uh, I guess what I'm getting at guys is, is uh, the more layers the better don't ever let anybody turn around and talk, oh you got too many or whatever I mean like I say in the examples that I have with the six different layers it don't it doesn't have to be five six you know it could be seven eight you can make it as many as you want as long as you're comfortable and that's the thing um, if you're comfortable and you're able to move you know that's the big thing too so I always turn around and suggest to people you know if you're going to prepare to turn around and go out and do a camp out if it's your first time put all this stuff on while you're at home before you ever go camping and, and try it and you know maybe just go out in your backyard or in your neighborhood or whatever and, and walk around and feel you know how does it feel how does it fit you know am I still able to move you know and stuff like that um, you know, I have the benefits, for an example, here where I live at, that, um, you know, we have a public park, um, uh, a nature park, right in my backyard that, that we go on. So, you know, I've done that, where I've put everything on and, and gone out and just walked, and yeah, I'll be good this weekend, and, you know, that's what I take. But, uh, so that's kind of that jacket. Then, obviously, we get to your outsides, your extremities, as I call them. So, you've got your scarf. Now, for me, I choose, I have, and I carry all the time, as I know some of us do, I carry a trusty bandana. Now, the reason I carry the bandana is multiple reasons, as we all know, and I can send out other videos and stuff like that, but I can use it for water filtration, um, you know, just to, you know, if I was going to add water that had twigs and leaves and all that stuff floating in it, and I was going to boil it, I can actually strain it through the bandana. Um, you know, if I do start to sweat, I got my sweat rag. <laughs> um, as well as if it's cold or getting cool, but I'm not cold to the point of being that, that I think I need my my uh, my um, a scarf, then, you know, I can turn around and obviously put on my bandana, as we all know how to do. And, uh, you know, to kind of around my throat or my neck area or whatever to turn around and, you know, try to heat that up. Um, you know, I can even turn around and, and, you know, not so cold I don't need my hat. I could look like Granny. <laughs> <laughs> Got to put any humor in there, guys. Um, you know, I can put it on over my head. But on a serious note, then uh, obviously my trusty, once again, my favorite material polyester wool blend so it's got a bit of wool to it but it's mostly polyester so I can cover up around my neck and cover up my face if need be then obviously for the head and it is a mixture again of wool and polyester it's my Wind River hat and guys again thrift store a buck keeps the head nice and toasty warm. Now, for my hands, this is where with gloves, it 
Some people will turn around and say different things. Gloves, to me, it comes down to, once again, it's personal preference. It's what you... Uh, bear with me there, guys. I'm just going to move this a bit. So I can get myself there. Myself kind of in frame a little better. Um, gloves, it kind of, for me, it comes down to, once again, it's personal preference on a person. Uh, I know some, you know, would turn around and say, um, if I was in the Arctic, most definitely, I would turn around and say, a glove and a mitt. Um, but here, where we're at in our climate, I mean, for a camping to and whatever, uh, it's not that, you know, minus 50, minus 60, minus 70, 80 degrees outside, so we don't have to worry about it. Um, that's where I choose to wear gloves all the time. But what I do is that I make sure that my gloves work individually. Uh, um, I know there's a word, and I can't think of the word right now, but um, that they complement, I'll say complement one another. So if it's not super, super cold out, and I'm not worried about my hand, my hands aren't getting cold, and I need to put on a pair of gloves because it's just a little cooler, or we're cutting or doing whatever, to protect my hands, I will turn around and put on my, which I love, and still get all the time, my uh, military combat gloves. Um, and it's just because I, I know the product, it's trusted, I've worn them for years, and I love them. Um, they're to the point of being that they're almost like like skin on my hands so I can fully dexterous and, and do whatever it is I need to do. Now, if they're not thick enough and my hands are still getting cold, then I turn around and go to my Terra. Once again, trusty Costco. Three pair for $17.99. I should be like a sales guy for Costco. <laughs> I've got my insulated um, Terra work gloves which they got like the Thinsulate and the polyester and stuff like that inside and uh, great gloves so I put them on now once again this is where I love and I talk about because our hands are the usually the most thing that are going to be out in the cold that I wear gloves the compliment is that if I'm still too cold then I can turn around and put on my combat glove and I have my outer gloves are sized to turn around and fit and fit my combat gloves inside them. And now I'm nice and toasty and warm. And uh, you know, I've been minus 30, minus 40 here in our area with these kind of gloves on. Um, last winter, prime example, and been able to turn around and work not a problem at all. I can use all my, you know, use the axe, use the dexterity. Or I should say, have full dexterity in, in what I'm doing. Um, so that's kind of the gloves. Last but not least, next to the gloves, as I turn around and say, is I think is one of the things that's most important that a lot of people don't spend a whole lot of time looking at is that you know you're using your hands all the time, so you you want something good to protect your hands that are going to keep your hands warm because our, our, our extremities are going to be the first thing that are going to get super cold and then we get into things like frostbite um, you know which will cause major issues another topic altogether so along with that the other thing is your feet um, everybody's going to turn around and be different and I know that this is uh, another topic that gets into uh, my boots are still dirty I should have washed them um, but different people are going to have different things I know some guys um, that you know prefer like uh, once again I use Cole Craven. Him and I were out. He turns on and wears it's um, uh, I, like I call it I call them gum rubbers. Um, that's the way I was always brought up. But like a rain boot, winterized rain boot. Um, you know they pull on and they come up to below his knee. I, I don't like boots like that. I, I find them restricting on my legs. I find I can't move. Whatever the case may be. Um, so I have a high ankle boot. So it comes up my ankle. Now, to me in the winter, definitely you're going to want, first thing is you're going to want waterproof, um, which mine are. Um, they're actually, now obviously because the way the tongue goes, they're fully waterproof up to here. Now, they can, they say, you know, when they're all tied up and everything else, they're still waterproof up here. But I beg to argue that and differ. If they're not waterproof, they might be water resistant because there's still the fact that the water can turn around and leak in. And you know, get inside your boot. Obviously, makes sense, right? So uh, in that case, you just 
change your socks, make sure everything's dry and get your boots dried out. But with these boots, um, they turn around and have the same thing. They're the uh, Thinsulate on the inside. I don't think I have to get into much detail about that. You guys can all see that and read that when you're looking out in boots. You're going to want something that's, you know, got a good insulation that, uh, you know, it's insulated the whole bit. And, uh, you know, for me, I like the, the harder. It's the polyester on the outside that's waterproof, but it's kind of got that hardened shell. And they're very, very, very warm. But that's, again, that's something that I would recommend that if you're going to go out and you're going to do a camp out, like everything else, don't just go out and say, all right, yeah, let's go camping, you know, Friday night, man. And uh, Thursday, you're running out to the store and you're turning on and buying all your stuff. You're packing it up Friday and you're taking off to the bush. Um, bad idea, in, in my personal opinion. Bad idea. Um, you're going to want to have your stuff way ahead of time and you're going to want to wear it. You're going to want to go out. You're going to want to try it. So, you know, like the boots, for instance, when I first got my boots the very first time, you know, put them on, wore them around the house. Well, they were clean so the wife didn't kill me <laughs> to feel what they were like um, you know going outside working around the yard wherever the case may be uh, you know take the kids to the park um, you know going out shopping and stuff like that had them on and uh, you know and then went for a hike a, uh, a small hike for the day and, and try them on and know what they feel like and uh, you know do they keep your feet warm and everything else they kept my feet warm they did the job I felt comfortable and I turned around and went and, and wear them now all the time when I go out. I, even to the point of being tested them for their, their waterproof. And uh, like a little kid, which I love doing with my, my younger children, uh, you know, as you guys know, Cody and uh, 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 Baby Bear Sis, as we call her, uh, my daughter, um, go and jump in mud puddles. <laughs> find the mud puddle, find the stream or whatever, and have some fun and jump in them and make sure that they are waterproof along with all the gear. So, I don't think I'm leaving anything out, guys. Uh, I know it's kind of been a little longer than, than, than I might have expected. And I've been rambling, rambling, rambling on. But, uh, but yeah, so that kind of covers that. Um, like I say, in the next one, the next part of the, the, the series that I want to do is definitely doing a camp out. Um, I know, like I said, Cole Kirby and I went out the other night, but that was kind of a test that we had done for ourselves, um, uh, we were pressed for time. Uh, it was starting to get dark, and uh, it was supposed to rain, and that was one of the reasons why we went out. Is uh, you know, as we all do, we do these skills to to practice. You know, our flint and steel, our our bow drill, or, or whatever the case may be. We don't do it all the time, but we do it. You know, as practice to keep ourselves up. And that's what we had done. Uh, we were testing ourselves and practice, you know, to practice that, um, you know, we could get there, we could get our shelter going. And, and that's the other thing, um, you know, uh, I don't know, you might have seen in the comment about the fact of being that him and I got the fire going. Um, some of us, uh, you know, say things differently about, um, you know, what's important and what's the first things to do, like shelter building or fire building or whatever. Um, him and I, we wanted to test ourselves. So uh, in our camp out, we had all our gear on, um, but uh, wanted to test ourselves. So what we did is we went out and uh, we built our shelter first, got our shelter up because we were confident enough, even though that everything was soaked, it was wet um, in the area that we were in, we were confident enough that we could get a fire going. Um, so we weren't worried about the fire first. We turned around and worried about the, um, the shelter. And that kind of gets into a whole nother discussion. <laughs> That, uh, that I actually want to do um, on my personal opinion of, uh, you know, once again, in, in a winter environment, um, what would be if I was if I was teaching somebody or taking somebody out for the very first time on a, a winter camp out, what I think is, uh, is important, the first thing to turn on and do. So we'll get to that in the, in the next area. So I guess, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, uh, I've got another video I'm going to do after this one. Um, I, I had a, my first video request, so I'm kind of excited, um, but uh, you'll see what that is. I don't want to get into another topic, but, uh, but if anybody has any questions or anything like that about this part uh, of what I've done, or on the first part, by all means, um, you know, send me a PM, put it in the comment below, um, whatever, and uh, 
I'll turn on and definitely get back to it and respond back to it. And uh, just as closing, once again to add to that, as I said before, this is not the training. It, uh, it, it's it's all my 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 theory, uh, what I was taught, um, you know, from being in the military, my Arctic survival, and everything else. By any means, I don't want you guys all or anybody to turn around and think, oh well, this guy knows what he's talking about. Um, you know, he was in the military, he was in the Arctic, uh, you know, he's been to the North Pole and everything else. Um, yes, that's true, absolutely, 100%, but I don't want somebody to turn around and think that, you know, just because they listen to me on a YouTube channel and, uh, you know, they watch this video that now they can go out and, and survive in the wilderness because, uh, guys, I can honestly turn around and tell you, I, you know, I'm that guy, I've got the big heart, and if I ever found out about it, if I ever heard about it, and somebody did that and they went out and, God forbid, worst case scenario, they got severe hypothermia and died and uh, it came back that well he thought he knew what he was doing because he watched uh, you know FS Bushcraft's video you'd make me feel this big um, I couldn't live with myself I guess um, it's just uh, shared knowledge and uh, that's all I'm putting out there um, as uh, Jarhead 6 I'll turn it on and bring bring him up a prime example he had a uh, video he was doing the other day about, um, um, oh gosh, I've watched so many of his lately, but it was basically talking about uh, firearms training and stuff like that, of, you know, our, uh, you know, brothers and sisters or whatever, they are turned on and served, and, you know, because they were in the military, you know, figure they're, uh, you know, the uh, gun expert, and they're out there, uh, you know, training people or whatever, and people are getting the wrong impression that, you know, they're getting the proper training, whatever the case may be. Uh, just because the person was supposedly in the military um, is wrong and uh, that's something I believe in too um, I know I have a lot of people and a lot of friends that do the same thing oh well, Pete you're ex-military um, you know you're gonna know it all well no I don't and I'll tell you that now um, kinda something that I I need to say in the closing but uh, you know it, it touches home but uh, yes you know I've been there I've done it um, you know, the combat and the whole thing, and, uh, it doesn't mean that I'm an expert by any means of the imagination, and I don't try to portray that I'm the expert, um, I'm just sharing what I've done and what I know. So, once again, any questions, comments, feel free, put them in the bottom, please like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, and, uh, once again, God bless. See you all soon.